I think this will do. I've been using the uh, A7 IV for around, I think it's four months. I've been using it for both wildlife and some landscapes. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you what my thoughts are on the A7 IV, especially for wildlife photography and how I think it performs in terms of like your video quality and image quality, ergonomics and such. So let's begin with image quality in video. I think the A7 IV performs really, really well in this category. The 4K 60p looks insanely good. I think that's one of my favorite features of the camera. So if you're like me, shooting most of your stuff for social media or YouTube and such, I prefer shooting wildlife in like slow motion or a higher FPS count because I think the animals deserves this slow motion to really capture everything and every emotion you can on the wildlife. So a problem I had with the a7 III, recording in 1080, 120 FPS is really, really good. But as soon as you need to crop in a little bit more to get those crispy close-up shots, they're not crispy anymore. They look like crap because you don't have any resolution to play with. This is where the 4K comes in. Then you can crop in a lot more and still have the 1080 resolution when you're exporting. And when you shoot 4K 60, the sensor is cropping in. I think it's 1.6 times or something. In many cases, this is a good thing in wildlife photography. And I know many people see it as a downside. Often when you're filming, you want that full sensor size and such but just in wildlife as you probably know there's good to have that reach because many animals aren't that easy to come close to and you shouldn't so in some situations you want to get low you might want something in the foreground mostly when you're shooting wildlife you want to get to eye level and getting eye level with a squirrel sitting on the ground or a bird you have to lay down on the ground the flip a tilty screen on the a7 IV helps with that because now I don't need to lay down in the mud every time to get the shot I want. I can see what I'm doing and have the camera as close to the ground as possible. So it's a really basic thing, but I'm really glad they finally added it to the a7 IV. And I see it as a big perk for wildlife photography and landscape photography. And most of the times when you're out shooting here in Sweden at least, it's cold AF. So you need gloves. The buttons on the a7 IV, it's much larger than the a7 III. I really like that because now you can use it with your hands on. And it's a, also a simple thing, but it makes a whole lot different because now I don't need to take my gloves off every time I need to like change some settings and such. I'm sitting in the bush here because the sun is approaching me. So that's why. So most of us were probably pretty disappointed when Sony announced the uh, A7 IV with the uh, continuous shooting of 6 FPS in uncompressed RAW. But the A7 IV can shoot in 10 FPS if you're shooting in compressed RAW. And to be honest, I shoot in compressed RAW every time and every shot you've seen on my Instagram or such is in compressed RAW. I don't see a difference. Uh, I know there's a little bit of difference if you pixel peep and if you like lift the shadows on 12,800 ISO and such. Most of the times, if you have good light, you won't see a difference between the compressed, lossless compressed and compressed RAW. I don't see any limitations using compressed RAW. I, I think the, uh, the dynamic range of the compressed RAW is really, really good. And I I've got some great image quality out of it. So I I don't I don't see it as a problem to be honest and the file sizes are actually not a problem that was one of the things when I decided to get the a7 IV instead of the a1 because the file sizes on the a1 in uncompressed raw is insanely large and I don't want to spend one year of salary to buy SSD hard drives so here you can see the three different file sizes of the uh, different raw qualities on the a7 IV if you've read and seen a lot of videos about the a7 IV, you've probably heard about the heating issues, that the camera gets really hot. Most, most of the times I'm outside and I've only used it in the winter times, so I'm not really the one to judge. For wildlife photography in the winter, it's not a problem, I can guarantee that. I'm excited to see how it performs in, in the summer, but if it's like 30 degrees Celsius outside, and shooting 4K60, I can imagine that it's getting hot pretty quickly. The 
autofocus performance on the a7 IV, I think it performs well. I've seen better on the A1, for example, but obviously we don't get that performance on the A7 IV because there's a price difference there. The bird eye autofocus is just so good and saved a lot of time and frustration. So personally, I often use the focus area flexible spot and I toggle between the small, medium and large. Mostly I use the medium one. So if you're shooting your bird sitting in a tree with a lot of branches and stuff, it's tricky for the camera to know what to shoot at, even with the bird IF on. If you got a lot of things going on, I've seen that it doesn't really find the eye. So sometimes you either have to use the manual focus to get closer to, to the focus on the bird, then it will find the, the eye. Or use the joystick and set the focus point on the bird. But then most of the times the eye autofocus does not work. The times when it doesn't, I guess you have to do it the traditional way. But for, for more open areas and places where you have like the bird in front of you with no branches or much foreground, I use wide and the AI can try to find a bird much easier and it locks the focus to the eye and it works really good. Since I've been mostly doing photography in my career and not much video until like recent year, I didn't really know the difference between 4K and 4K. So these A7IV's 4K is oversampled from 7K. So the image quality is super sharp. And to be honest, I didn't think that you would see any difference because I'm not that experienced in video. You see a whole lot of difference from the a7 IV compared to this camera, for, for example, the a7C. Like the image quality on the a7 IV is so sharp. It's incredibly sharp. And I'm really glad to see that, that it's not just numbers they throw at you. It's it's actually a whole lot of difference. <laughs> so a short little break here. So this nice couple came to me and said that there was a snake laying on a an oak tree over here. So I need to go check it because I don't have any photos of a the uh, hugurm in Swedish. I have no idea what the English word for it is, but that would be so cool. So I hope it's laying there. Oh, det var det jag tänkte gå och kolla på. Ja. Var ligger den? Den ligger precis så. Ja, men gud vad bra. Den måste jag springa och kika. Tack för tipset. That is a, such a cool encounter. So to sum things up, is the a7 IV a wildlife camera? No, it's not. Is the a7 IV good enough for wildlife? Definitely. At least for me. Uh, for my type of shooting and what I do with my stuff, I think the a7 IV is a perfect wildlife camera for the price. Of course the A1 is like doing everything better, but the price point of the A1 is just too much for me as I want to buy a house instead of the... <laughs> instead of a camera body. So if you're planning to get the a7 IV for wildlife photography, I can recommend it. But if you're one of those that has a higher budget, I think the A1 is the winner of, obviously. If you're on a budget and can't spend the money for an a7 IV, get the a7 III. I had the a7 III for a couple of years and I absolutely love that camera. It's, of course the a7 IV is, has some perks over it, but I think the value you get for the a7 III right now 
is so much worth it. And spending money on a lens is way more valuable than spending money on a camera body. So if split that budget up and place 70% of that money on your lens and not on your camera body. So if you reach this far, I want to say thank you so much. And if you have any questions about using the a7 IV for a specific thing, ask him down in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.